Hi everyone, I hope you are well and reading good books. I can't believe it's already November. The Toronto International Festival of Author Authors finished on November 1st, so today I'm going to be talking about the first 10 events I participated in during the festival. You probably saw that this is a part one. I went to several events, so there will be a part two later this week telling you about more of the events and probably even a part three will be out soon to finish it up. For those who have watched my videos before, welcome back. For those watching for the first time, I'm so glad that you are able to join us. My name is Jolene from Bookworm Adventure Girl, and I love to read diverse books, diverse authors and genres, um, and I love Canadian literature. If this is something that interests you, then please hit subscribe and stick around. Today I'll be talking about the Toronto International Festival of Authors, or as we like to call it, TIFA. It was the 41st edition of the festival this year, and it was held from October 22nd to November 1st. And this year it was all virtual due to COVID, and I have the, had the opportunity to see many authors and learn more about them and their books. So I am very excited to share that with all of you. Um, if you stick around to the end, I am going to share a little bit about the series that they had called Skin Hunger, which I thought was ingenious and it really fit the theme of the festival, which was bringing a new world into focus. So to begin, I will share the events I attended on day one and then go from there. So the first event was titled Bearing Witness. It was with Helen Humphreys and Kate Pullinger. They were interviewed by um, Deborah Dundas, and I've talked about Helen Humphreys before and her newest novel, Rabbit Foot Bill, um, which I have now read and I really enjoyed it. Kate Pullinger is a new author to me and I am quite interested in her novel. It's called Forest Green. Both of these books have male main characters that follow them from boyhood to later life. And both are about small towns in Western Canada and both are inspired by true stories and true events. So Rabbit Foot Bill is based on Humphrey's friend Hugh Lefebvre who knew Rabbit Foot Bill. And in the book, Leonard is based on Hugh Lefebvre. In Forest Green, the main character, Art, is loosely based on Kate's uncle, Art, who was a logger and disappeared. Both stories were more tragic and more bleak than the books are. Um, the story that Hugh Lefebvre told Helen was very different than the actual story, but Helen liked his story better, and so she stuck with Hugh's story. And both stories are about trauma and healing, healing our trauma, and both have characters who are marginalized. So in Forest Green, um, it deals with homelessness, and Rabbit Foot Bill deals with mental illness. Both authors tell these stories to humanize them, and Kate specifically talked about how siblings' lives can be so different, even though they've had the same upbringing. The next event was called Tradition on Trial with Fernanda Melkor and Frizana Doctor. They were interviewed by Neosha Kezad, and Fernanda Melkor is a Mexican author, um, and C Hurricane Season is her most recent novel translated to English. This is a book that's been on my radar, as I've heard really good things about it, and um, Fernanda says that she was inspired by an article in a newspaper and the journalist was talking about a murder that had taken place and within the article they talked about rich witchcraft and crimes of passion um, and the book has been described as gothic and violent yet beautiful the writing has long and overwhelming rhythmic sentences each chapter is written from a different narrator it has themes of homophobia and misogyny. And of course says that writing Hurricane Season was an exploration of what is hidden in the darkest corners of the human heart. Farzana Doctor's book Seven begins in 2016 in Mumbai, India. And Doctor was motivated to write this novel by activism against gender-based violence um, in her community. And it's written in short chapters and it reads as a diary. The main theme in this book is female genital mutilation. And Farzana wanted to write a beautiful novel about beautiful women that would bring difficult issues to the forefront. Um, both of 
the stories are normalized ways that women are diminished and they are about women who renounce tradition. So even with intergenerational violence, there have always been ways that women have resisted patriarchal violence. The next event was an evening with Margaret Atwood. She was interviewed by Roland Gulliver, who is the director of the Toronto International Festival of Authors. And I'm going to be talking a lot about Margaret Atwood um, when the Mondays with Margaret series starts, which is on November 9th. So I won't take too long going into that. Um, they obviously talked about Dearly, which is Atwood's 18th poetry collection coming out in just a week, over a week. Um, some of the major themes that Roland and Margaret talked about was Canada's place in the world and Indigenous people in Canada. Um, and the fact that Canada is multilingual and always has been due to the fact that there are so many languages from our First Nations people. Um, Atwood also talked about the theme of resistance being important in her work. And she said that they are shooting season four of The Handmaid's Tale. And they also talked about the role of dystopian fiction in our current state. And then Margaret Atwood showed the drawer where she keeps all of her poems. It was very exciting. Um, she read one of her poems from her new collection, Dearly, which um, encapsulates the last 10 years, but she said there's nothing from 2020. And the poem that she read was called Princess Clothing. A theme that kept coming up in the festival events was the theme of home. And it was very prominent in the next event, which was called Home Sweet Homelands with Ayad Akhtar and Shukafe Azar. They were interviewed by Wendy O'Brien and they began by talking about home being a place or a feeling. And they also talked about language as home, which is something I've never thought of and probably because I only speak one language. Um, Ayad Akhtar is the author of Homeland Elegies. The novel begins with an address to the reader, and the main idea is pillaging your nation to enrich the individual and coming into a political consciousness. Um, the idea of America being the land of opportunity is nothing new, um, but what does that really mean? And he talked about economic prosperity and becoming disillusioned. Um, there are no conclusions in the book, but there are experiences and consequences both psychological and personal. The Enlightenment of the Green Gauge Tree is by Shukafe Azar, and it takes place in Iran, and the main character, Rosa's idea of home as a safe place where you can be whoever you are. Um, it's inside society where you need to wear a mask. So Rosa is really connected to nature. She's a teenager when she falls in love and she has three children. Her daughter is killed in the revolution, and her son has been arrested by the government. So Rosa won't go outside of the house because she has to cover her head with a hijab and she doesn't want to accept wearing a mask. So therefore for her, home is the place she can keep her identity. And another character in the novel has a more intellectual idea of home. He locks himself in the library, which is a place he can connect with intellectuals around the world. Um, Azar uses magical realism to tell her story as it is part of the culture. And in the enlightenment of the Green Gage Tree, home represents basically everything you love. And in this story, it is all in danger of being destroyed. So home is freedom, uh, freedom of speech, freedom of who you have relationships with, freedom with nature, everything that made you, and it's all at risk of being destroyed by the government. The fifth event was Unpacking Grief with Marta Orioles and John Elizabeth Stincy. They were interviewed by Janet Smith. Um, Canadian-born author John Elizabeth Stincy's debut novel is Vanishing Monuments, and Marta Orioles' debut novel is How to Talk to Plants. You can probably guess by the title of this event that these books are about death and grief. Vanishing Monuments takes place in Winnipeg. The main character, Alani, who is a non-binary photographer and teacher. She returns home because her mother has dementia. She hasn't seen her mother in about 30 years and her mother is no longer verbal and 
Um, this novel just isn't about physical death, but also social death and the little deaths and losses that we have throughout our lives and how we lose ourselves. And John has another novel coming out in the next year or so, so I'm looking forward to that. Marta Orioles is a Catalan author based in Barcelona. Um, and in learning to talk to plants, the main character, Paula's partner, dies. Um, the day he dies, he tells her he is leaving her for someone else. So she is dealing with the loss of her partner and the relationship that she thought they had. This book takes place in Barcelona. And Marta says she used the city to show the contrast between the normal life of a big city to what is actually going on inside of Paula, where time has stopped and feels like she is at a standstill. She wanted to write a novel where death was part of life. She has Sweet Introduction to Cows that just came out in Spanish, but I'm looking forward to that when it is translated into English. Next up is Assumed Identities with Catherine McKenzie and Katrina Onstad. They were interviewed by Marissa Stapley and her Stapley, I'm not sure. Um, Catherine McKenzie's 10th novel is You Can't Catch Me. And the main character, or maybe I should say the first Jessica, since there are four Jessicas in this book, um, she grows up in a cult. And the book is about identity theft and the lengths that the victim goes through for revenge. Catherine talked about the fact that there are not only external threats, but internal threats when you're telling women's stories. And I really love that and think maybe that's why the stories have more depth to them. In this novel, Catherine explores the idea that morality might not be as fixed as we might think it is in all situations. In Katrina Onstad's Stay Where I Can See You, the Kaplan family has won the lottery, like a $10 million won the lottery. Um, Gwen is the main character. She's a mother and she defines herself as a mother. She's also trying to hide some of her identity. So the contrast this with her teenage daughter, Maddie, who is trying to find her own identity um, separate from her mother. So this lottery stirs up a lot of secrets and lies. In this uh, novel, Katrina explores how many of ourselves we have to suppress. Gwen is having to come to terms with the fact that all of her identities don't line up and she's confronted by these lingering shadow selves. Um, this also makes Gwen a bit of an unreliable narrator, which I really like. Um, there is also the theme of reinvention as characters reinvent themselves. And she also wanted to explore the idea of circumstances as chance and that randomness of who gets ahead and that good fortune will follow good people. I've only read one other book by Elaine de Botton, but the interview about Elaine de Botton's The School of Life and Emotional Education was very interesting. De Botton was um, interviewed by Janet Smith, and maybe because I work in a school, I found this conversation very interesting. Alan talked about um, looking at what we do and don't teach in schools, um, and he said that we don't learn about relationships they are not intuitive and easy and that we need courses on how to understand ourselves. Um, and he said that some might say that these things can't be taught, but that we leave a lot to chance if, if we believe that, you know, intuition is better than reason. And um, he said that we need to broaden the conversation of what it means to be human. He did a reading from his book and it was about why people break down and I thought that was very interesting and I will probably pick up this book just to learn a little bit more about that. Um, he also talked about friendships and romantic relationships and that we put too much pressure on the romantic relationships at the cost of friendships and that we forget about those friendships and how important they really are. He also talked about our relationships with our jobs and work. He said it's one of the ways that we identify ourselves and we want the respect that comes with those jobs. And then lastly, the conversation turned to that pandemic. And Alan said that one of the positive things he hopes will come out of the pandemic is that it will bring about the idea that, you know, things that we once thought were stable are actually very fragile. And he's hoping that there will be a flexibility of the world. 
The eighth event was No More Nice Girls. Lauren McKeon interviewed Michelle Paris and Hannah Shaffey. Lauren McKeon is the author of No More Nice Girls. Michelle Paris is the author of Alone, A Love Story. And Hannah Shaffey is the author of Small, Broke, and Kind of Dirty. And all three novels are about gender and power and breaking the rules that are put on women. So they talked about women are supposed to make people feel comfortable. So talking about things that we normally don't talk about is not okay. For Hannah, her book talks about bowel movements and Michelle talked about mothers not being allowed to say they don't like being pregnant or that they don't like being home with a baby during maternity leave. Um, and women are also not supposed to enjoy sex. And there was a conversation around, you know, being nice versus being kind. So these novels all have female characters that are not following the prescribed rule of living their lives in a particular way or in a particular order. The next event was Sleepwalking to Catastrophe. Um, Emily St. John Mandel was interviewed by Roland Gulliver. And I've already talked about Emily St. John Mandel's book, The Glass Hotel, um, several times. So I won't go into it in great detail, but I will link the other videos up top and down below um, if you haven't seen them yet, um, where I talk about the novel more. And I did talk about it as part of the ghost stories video. So for Mandel, she, she wanted to write a ghost story about our lives being haunted by the ghosts of our lives we didn't live, which I thought was an interesting concept. Um, Mandel also talked about researching Ponzi schemes and basing the Ponzi scheme in the novel on the Bernie Madoff trials and Ponzi scheme. The character Jonathan was written as a con artist who was able to make people think that they were special. Um, it exists best uh, when even though there are things we don't understand and it's really just a mass delusion. And the last event I'll share on this video was called Shifting Sides of Conflict um, with Colin McCann. And I've been interested in reading McCann's novel, A Paragon, and after this interview, I want to read it even more. Colum was interviewed by um, Randy Boyagoda, and A Paragon is a shape with a countably infinite number of sides. So the idea of the novel came from when Colum was in Jerusalem, and two men shared their stories of their daughters with him. So the real life events of Rami and his daughter Smidar, who was 13 when she died, and Bassam and his daughter, who was 10 years old when she died. Um, so a Palestinian and an Israeli came together against all odds and used the force of their grief as a weapon for peace. Colum called a paragon a hybrid novel, and he said that the first 25 pages are deliberately confusing. It is about the Israel-Palestine conflict and how people can be complicit. And I, th I think this is going to be a heavier book and it sounds like an emotional one as well. One of the series that Tifa had was called Skin Hunger and several authors shared either a short story or an essay or poem about skin hunger and the pandemic. So I wrote about six of them, um, which I was able to catch and some were in other languages and unfortunately I missed a couple. Um, but the six I got were very well done, and I will leave a link to my blog post if you want to learn more about what skin hunger is and what the authors had to say about it. Please let me know in the comments below if you have read any books on this list or if there are any that interest you. I look forward to chatting with you there. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and don't forget to make every day an adventure.